you guys probably remember this bike, Bling. We are doing some upgrades for him. Got something big in the works for this. This is coming off and uh, let's just say we're gonna throw on about 30 more cc. And then, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuffs just to make it a better riding situation. All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles. Okay, so, pay attention. <sighs> Sorry, didn't mean to come off so mean. All right, so what we're doing is we need to work on bling. Uh, Paul, my friend Paul, his bike is not working. So we had a plan already to rebuild his bike to a degree. We wanted to put a new motor on it and maybe some front shocks and a bunch of other stuff, but the other stuff's gonna be over time. But for now, he wants something with more power. So I'd rather, instead of taking that apart and fixing it, I'd rather just get this fixed and get this going for him now. It's a nice CDH one, brand new to me. I bought this brand new. I bought two of these brand new in the box. I got a great deal on them. So I bought two of them because I had plans for them, but unfortunately we're gonna take it and use it for something completely different. Why not, right? So I actually used this. This was on Purple Nightmare to get Purple Nightmare moving. It, it ended up being a completely different thing that I ended up not using at all. So I ended up taking the motor off and putting it to the side. Now I never ran one of these motors stock. It was a joke. It ran and it stayed running, but it didn't have much speed. It would pull up a hill like a, like it was a stump puller. It would just chug right up the hill like it didn't mean nothing. Steep hills. But it just couldn't really get out of its own way at the same time, if that makes sense. Had tons of torque, but no horsepower. So I know what it feels like stock. It's an absolute uh, joke. But obviously I'm not gonna give it to him stock. I'm gonna end up doing this one very similar to Norm's. Now Norm's, I made very similar to Jokesters with a few tweaks. There is gonna be some things that I don't do to this one that I ended up doing in Norm's, but most importantly, all around reliable motor. And being that it's a steel sleeve motor, that is gonna have unbelievable reliability. So I'm very interested to break this apart because I did have this running for a day. Now that day, if you put all the runtime together and just said it was one minute after another minute, it was maybe 35 to 40 minutes of actual running runtime. And most of that was around five to 10 miles an hour. Like I said, this didn't go very fast. It didn't run very great. It just ran. There was no wow at all, except for the fact of how it would just pull up a hill, like no problem at all. So we are going to break this apart. I'm curious to see what it is inside and how it looks. This needs to happen ASAP because his bike is outside. I don't have a bike that I can loan him to use. So I know he wants this done as soon as possible.
squish. Basically, we don't have any squish. 1.89, so almost two millimeters. So I'm thinking we might be able to lose the base gasket, but these motors are kind of funny when you go taking off the base gaskets. I've noticed that they don't react too well to it. But all in all, guys, I mean, we got a really nice looking base to start with. One thing I'm noticing, this is extremely thick here. There's usually not this much lip up here. Usually it's about maybe half of this. This is a very thick ledge. So we'll see, maybe we could just lose one base gasket, but it also is gonna vary and depend on not just where the squish is at, but also if we have any free port issues, because something I notice if you are not careful with these, the bottom lip where the steel sleeve is, it keeps the skirt of the piston covering the crankcase, and that's why it's very hard to lose the gaskets on these. And something else I noticed, see this? Do you know what this is? It's the crankcase seal. They don't even have it in the case. Like more than half of that is sticking above it. Well, I'm surprised it wasn't rubbing and getting worn down by the gear. Okay, so I just wanted to show you since I got this off right now. So you saw coming up, going right out the exhaust and then back here coming in and it looks like it might have even been leaking up through the intake and then swirling right here. Okay, that's this is an exact what was happening. And then here, right out, that's a shame. So one of the reasons why it was underperforming so bad. Now, with it being on this side, coming up this way, the right side of the motor, that's this side, okay? So we're gonna flip it over and I wanna show you something. So on these iron sleeves, there's usually a lip right here. Can you see this one? There is almost no lip. Like it is pretty much straight free flowing. This side, huge, huge lip. I don't know if you guys will be able to pick it up, but it is a huge lip. It's got to be almost mill and a half, two millimeter lip. So that's why this side of the motor was barely flowing. Everything was coming up this side. But we're going to strap this back down on the motor and get some measurements on the ports and the timing of everything. Okay, guys, so I get all the measurements and I just wanted to bring you in to show you, you know, how I come up with getting the new measurement. So the transfers, they were way off. Uh, the right side measured in at 99 degrees and left side measured in at 109 degrees. Since the left one is the higher number, we're going to work off of that one to get our measurement lines. I would like to get it up to about 120. So you can see that between uh, 120 and 109, if you subtract that from each other, that's 11 degrees difference. Now that's on duration, that's the full 360. We only want to mark for half of that. So we want half of 11, which is going to be 5.5 degrees. So since the transfers, we'll just go with the open number. The transfers open at 126. We need that to open five and a half degrees sooner. I would like to get it up to about 120. That's going to get us our proper number. Uh, the intake, we are at 118 and we would like to get it up to about 142. So the intake is 118 right now. Hey Siri, what is 142 minus 118? 24 degrees difference. So we need to go half of that, which is gonna be 12. 12 plus the intake here is gonna be 71. So we're gonna to wanna to get our intake to open at around 71 degrees. The exhaust, so we are at 138. We'd like to get it to about a 164, 26 degrees difference. So 26 divided by two is gonna be 13. So 26 degree difference on the duration means you want half of that. So that's gonna be 13. So we wanna go about 98 is where we would like it to open up at. So that's how you do that. Say we get these numbers that we're shooting for, a 120 transfer open and then an exhaust of uh, 98 open. That's pretty easy math. That's gonna give us a 22 degree blowdown, which is perfect. Let's get marking up what we're gonna do Okay guys, so I put you here on a weird angle just so you can see it. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it anyway, but in here at top dead center now I don't have it clamped down, but there is a tiny bit So there is a little bit of free port going on in the exhaust Which is a super common problem with these motors literally every motor that I have done every one of these CDH 110s has had a free port slash 
crosstalk issue. It's very frustrating because the only way to fix it is raising the cylinder and then cutting the top of the cylinder off. I added two extra base gaskets to make sure we don't have any of the crosstalk issue, which we do not at all. So that seals up the crankcase. All right, guys, so I am not going to give you a full rundown on everything on what I'm doing and what I did to the motor. But what I will do is show you real quick up to this point. I have not taken my final measurements. However, I do know about where they'll be. Uh, I took everything to 180. Uh, like I normally did. Now, something I did do here that I normally don't do, but I felt it necessary to do this time. I deck this, obviously, as you can see how smooth it is. I opened this up. So when the spark plug was in here, it only goes up to the threads that you see there. The rest are not getting touched. But the way this was is this came out and kind of shrouded the spark plug where the initial spark would come from and i feel like it might be something so minuscule but it can kind of encapsulate the explosion if you will and i feel like it lessens the effectiveness now i did not open it up much but what i did is basically cove it and make it so that the charge can get in smoothly and most importantly so that the charge can exit quickly also by it getting into the area better i feel like it will help it get a better burn as a whole the cleaner you can get your engine to run the faster it's going to be the higher it's going to rev the smoother it's going to be the less fuel it's going to use all these things are obviously a benefit 100 percent it's going to be reliable now for the numbers okay a little refresher so you know where we came from the transfers we had two different uh the right and the left it was very uneven on this one we had a 99 duration on the right one we had a 109 duration on the left one uh, intake we had a 118 intake and for the exhaust we had a 134 for the blowdown, we had 15 degrees of blowdown and our stock squish was about 1.89 millimeters. Uh, my projected numbers that I wanted was about a 120 transfers, a 142 intake, and a 164 exhaust. We got close-ish. So our final numbers for the transfers, uh, I'm really happy with this too. 124 transfer duration, spectacular. The intake, we got a 144 degree duration. Phenomenal, I'm really happy. We got 20 degrees of difference between the intake and the transfers. Guys, this is important. If you start pointing your numbers, you need a minimum of 15 degrees of duration difference between the intake and the transfers, and you want it in the intake's favor. We're good there. Our exhaust, we were shooting for 164. We got her at final, a 172. This is going to be, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be a little hotter than I was planning. But it is what it is. Now, also, for our blowdown, we have a 24-degree blowdown. That's great. So those are our numbers. That's where we're at. We did great. Now, let's get outside and put this thing on a bike. So you guys saw a little bit in the beginning, I was building a CDH 110, which is quickly becoming my new favorite motor and a go-to 100%. If you're willing to, you know, hock up the coin. It's not cheap. The base model is about $150 for just the motor. Sometimes you can find a kit. I bought a couple of them because I found a kit for a little less than that. So keep your eyes open. You can find them too. Now, out of the box, they're horrible. They have no power. They are little stump pullers 100% right out of the box it will just chug along no matter what's tied around on it drag in anything it will just go but it's not going to go fast it basically was topping out at like I don't know 15 ish 20 miles an hour maybe with a 44 2 sprocket and a 26 inch tall tire so it doesn't really scoot around very fast stock when you go through it fix the port timings fix the free porting issue with the exhaust and a bunch of other little things and just give it a once over a good cleaning with the ports and all this they're performers they are performers they have great power meaning great horsepower they have great torque it will pull you up a hill no problems with a smaller sprocket it will the horsepower has no problem getting away from the light and just going they are real workhorses very very happy with it once it's ported and you saw in the beginning of the video that's what we did we had a cdh 110 that we ported up and i might have hinted towards where it was going but it's going to bling bling is sitting right here to the right of me and we are going 
to take it apart and fix it. We have a lot to do. We're gonna see if we can't get it all done in this video. I'm pretty sure we can, because it's really how I edit it. But it's pretty rough. So the last time you guys saw it was probably my bike berry video for the exhaust. What it is, is it's got the 80cc on it. Uh, I poured it, it wasn't very aggressive. You saw in the bike berry video, if you watch that, that it was mild port. This is basically a stock motor I took out and I just cleaned the ports up. I kept the basic same RPM max that it will go to and I just gave it a little bit more power and torque throughout the entire rev range of a stock motor. And it's great. It really does perform. The problem with it is he rode Tweaker. And that bike has a very highly modified YD100 on it, meaning big port numbers, big port sizes, revs to the moon. It is a monster of a YD100. He mainly rides minimal hills, but a lot of flat ground. And just being able to get away from the lights and away from traffic just really gives you some peace of mind knowing that if you get in a jam, you can pull away really fast and get out of the way and not have to worry about the cars hitting you. So we're gonna strip this bike completely down. So there are some broken spokes in here because he has some broken spokes on the rear wheel, not to mention it is very untrue. So we gotta true it up. We also have to true up the front wheel because that is a nightmare all on its own. And we're gonna put a new front fork on it. I'm pretty sure I got a pair of shocks that should fit this really nice. And with the new shocks is gonna come new brakes. We're gonna have the cantilever brakes, basically the side brakes, where they give so much better braking than these old school side pull brakes give. I took the derailleur off, we're gonna put a new one on. I'm also gonna go through a lot of the cables, they're all frayed and chewed up. I'm gonna to try to put some new ones on where I can. Other little things, I don't know, we'll go through it and see how it is. I have an old seat I'm gonna throw on. He wants a wide seat. Also, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying the audio. I bought myself a real microphone. Just go like this, look up. No, you can't see it, I got you. Yeah, I got you to do that. But it's a shotgun mic, I believe. And I did a sound test with it. Man, is it really nice sound. It really sounds great. Because I can't believe how nice this sounds. Sounds really nice, right? What do you think? Yeah, let me know in the comments. Just bleep bloop it right down there on the bottom. Let's finish this off. I gotta pull the fork out. The gas is drained. I might take the crank out just to grease it all up and go through it so he has something, you know, real nice. And that's it. And then we gotta scrub it down. We gotta wash it. I was thinking about taking it to the automatic car wash just to, you know, really spray it down good. But I think I got some rags I could just wipe it and go from there. Cause I don't feel like doing any extra work if I'm being honest. All right, game plan, break, go. Uh, on three, build a bike. One, two, three, build a bike. Good job, guys. All right. So I know it looks like she's getting close, and it, she is, she is getting close, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, the rear wheel is literally on there only to keep the derailleur off the ground. This is the stock wheel. Can you see the wobble? It's bad. Now I've fixed this wheel a bajillion times and it just keeps happening. He loves spoke wheels because he thinks they're stronger than mag wheels. I've never had to fix my mag wheels outside of blowing axles. And since I rectified the problem over tightening the cone nut after tightening the jam nut, I haven't had to fix an axle either. So to say simply 100%, if you're gonna ride on a daily, mag wheels are the way to go. Nonetheless, we have another old steel wheel this bike is an old steel wheel type of bike we're gonna take the tire and tube off of the stock one and the the sprocket also obviously off of it we're gonna throw it on this this is one off of purple nightmare from back in the day we'll use that it just got to be cleaned up a little bit but it's true and that's the important part but i got new brake pads in the rear i got new brake pads in the front we have the regular uh, cantilever brakes in the front so that's a huge upgrade I also put a new front wheel in. I have a ton of aluminum front wheels and this one has quick release. Now you can see it has front shocks. This is sitting so much different than it used to. It is sitting up higher. It is way, way nicer. He's gonna be happy with that. There's no doubt in my mind that he'll be happier with that. We didn't put the new seat on yet. Still gotta do that. But handlebars are actually brand new aluminum handlebars. I bought them a while ago. I'm not gonna use them anytime soon. So I was like, you know what? Let's just throw them on his bike because they're uh, a high raise handlebars and it gets the handlebars up. The, the higher you can get your handlebars and closer to you, the more comfortable you're gonna be riding every day, all day. And he rides a lot, like I said, so this is gonna be really nice. Uh, we put a brand new derailleur on the rear 
And other than that, we are golden. So we're getting really close. I just got to do the rear wheel. Once the rear wheel is done, we can then move forward with putting the engine on and stuff like that. All right, guys, so we're doing good. We are inside because we got a couple things to do in here that's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. So what an upgrade from switching from the old school steel front wheel to this aluminum front wheel. I mean, it is night and day difference with how much lighter. I know you can't tell by me throwing it. Okay, the battery died. Let's try this again. So, like I was saying, it is a huge upgrade to have this aluminum wheel. The weight of this wheel is crazy better in comparison to what we had. Now, this wheel rolls super smooth and just all around nice, but because I've never actually been inside this wheel, we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna re-grease it. I'd rather just be safe than sorry, you know? Especially since it's not gonna be me on there. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing to this one. But the reason we're gonna go with the steel wheel in the back is two reasons, really. One, I think the steel wheels, when you're going with spoked rims, are by far sturdier than the aluminum rims for the rear wheel. And two, on this bike, the other reason is steel wheels are thicker than the aluminum wheels. And being as this is an old school side pull brake type of bike, it has old school side pull brakes and they work best on a steel wheel because they're wider than the aluminum wheels. So this all the way around is just gonna work better on that bike. Now, we have a couple things to do. We gotta take the sprocket off of there, take the wheel off of there, take the tube off of there, put it on here. But we are gonna go through this completely. I mean, it seems to roll smooth. The axle is honestly butter smooth right now. This has tape on it. I'm going to assume that I actually went through this and this has all been re-greased. I put duct tape or really um, Gorilla Tape on any wheel that I've used in the past. I'm pretty sure this thing is straight too. Yeah, it's like laser straight. I'm pretty positive I went through this. So this is gonna be a pretty quick upgrade for the most part. This is gonna take longer than that will because that one I obviously went through. And if this one I never went through, it's gonna take a little while. But this one is also a quick release, so we have uh, that to play with. Now, I will use a quick release on my rear wheel, no problem, on my bike. On someone else's bike, I, I worry about doing that just because, you know, it's, you know, people aren't, people don't pay attention. I don't know how to really say it without being mean, but they don't pay attention and they just do stupid things. And before you know it, you got people crashing and all kinds of nonsense. So we're going to try to not have that happen. And we are going to just go ahead and rectify that by putting a non quick release wheel on there. All right, let's get into this as soon as I can find my stupid wrench. I don't know what I do with it. Ah, you would think I would have hung it up. I have no idea. Okay, I'll be back. All right, guys, so we did really good. We got everything nice and lubed up. Front wheel's over there too. I'm gonna start working on the sprocket and the tire and tube. Basically simple. The sprocket is a little time consuming just because of so many bolts. But I did have to change out one thing on the front wheel, which just makes me very happy that I actually went through it and did that. I don't know if you guys will be able to pick it up, but see right in here, see how chewed up it is? It's like pitted in the chrome. That's, that's super common to be honest with you. That happens a lot of times, but it was rolling what felt smooth. Once I took that apart and I saw that, that's only rolling smooth maybe because I'm going at such a low speed or because it was recently greased up, but very shortly and very quickly that will become rough. And once you start chewing into that like that, you start chewing up your bearings and you just start ruining it all the way around, especially when you're doing higher speeds. And that was the only issue I saw with everything. So for now, we're gonna go with the stock exhaust, but with this new sprocket, it gives him a lot more options for his cruising and what have you like that. So let's finish doing this. We're gonna make this a bike.
our next step is definitely Spark. I did put a brand new CDI on because I didn't trust his and since he's getting a brand new motor, I figured, you know, we should get a brand new CDI. I'll probably continue with the stock exhaust and the stock carburetor for now at the bare minimum because I don't think those are causing the issue. But the way it is backfiring out the carburetor, that's usually timing and ignition. Now I did have the problem with the crosstalk on this, but that was all rectified. Just gotta go over everything, make sure everything's good, make sure it's not arcing out or something stupid. We did fix the clutch, it's not slipping anymore. And everything else on the bike is working amazing. Also, another thing that, I mean, it, technically it could be, is the exhaust. I did drill two small holes in it just to help it breathe better because I was worried about it being too congested with what I did to the motor. But that's TBD, so we'll see. All in all, though, she's not bad. We'll we'll get it lined out. I'm not I'm not really stressing the, that. I just wish it was, uh, you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, but it all can't be like that, I guess. What am I missing? I'm missing something. I think I'm missing something. All right, guys, good morning. So today's plan is a simple one. The plan is we get this working. I know, it seems simple. So there's a couple things we're gonna do to try to make that happen. None of which I am going to tell you because they're all gonna be a surprise. Just kidding, I'm going to tell you all of them because none of it is a surprise, except maybe to me that it actually works. So I'm gonna be honest, I really don't know why the motor's acting the way it's acting. It's acting very funny. It's, uh, it's running, but it's running poorly. Now, it does sound very much so like it is backfiring through the carburetor. I, you know, I do a lot of thinking. I, I want to say I, I want to start with the carburetor, but no matter what, when it's all said and done, it's not going to backfire out of the carburetor because it's bad carburetion. When it starts backfiring like that, before it even starts running, while you're trying to get it to start up, that's usually timing. And that's what we're going to try to get into. So I think we're going to start with the timing. I'm going to take this cover off and I brought out an, uh, an old magnet from an old motor that I just know works. I'm going to see if there's any variations between the two. So I'm going to put that magnet that I know 100% is a good magnet. I also brought out a brand new coil and a brand new CDI. Even though this CDI I put on here is brand new and I do not think it's the problem because it is giving spark. Same thing with the coil, I don't really think it's the coil because the coil is giving spark. But basically the, the spark and start with the magnet. And if the magnet isn't strong enough or the magnet is slightly off with the timing, which is very possible, that will cause the backfire. And that's kind of what I'm thinking is going on. I'm not gonna lie, I do love working on a brand new motor because it's so clean. Now this is the magnet that was on here. And you can see, see the rubbing, that, that brown? The original, what do you call it? Seal, sorry. The original seal was really messed up. It was too far out and it was rubbing on that. Now that there, that's grease, because when I put the seal on, on the actual shaft, I put a little bit of grease so that it slips over fine. Now. This was not like this when I installed it, but look what we got here. This is now separating. You can see it's bent really bad here. This magnet is really tore up, guys. I don't remember seeing it this dinged up. The way it's backfiring definitely makes me think that the magnet is not firing at the right time. So we're gonna start with just a magnet because everything else, technically, it works fine. This is the bang that we're gonna use. It's an old magnet. It's used, it's got dings and dents for me taking it on and off, but it works good. It's got really strong magnetism still. Let's see if we can't do something about this, guys. We're gonna put this magnet on and we're gonna slap it back together and then we're gonna try it. And I do not recommend doing this, guys, but I am a trained professional. You all know that's not true. I'm a trained idiot, but there, there was training that went with being an idiot. So, I mean, you know, 
take that how you want. I don't care. Now, when you install this, you want to install it with it at the 11 o'clock position. That's a joke. Don't do that. You want to install it like this at the one o'clock position, okay? If, if this was a clock, 12 numbers on a clock. 12 is at top, then it goes one. You want to install it at the one o'clock position. So the flat surface, you want to make sure that this is at the one o'clock position. Boy, wouldn't that be great that this works? But if this does work, which, you know, it might, because that magnet is definitely not right. It would also explain why I was having so much trouble with, with this motor in the completely stock form. How do you guys feel about this? I'm feeling pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. You guys, uh, well, one, you started leaning down, and two, you guys turned off. I don't really know how much you got of that, or what you got, or any of it. But, that's okay, nonetheless. It is already starting to idle much better. We definitely fixed a problem with that magnet. That magnet was screwed up. And that goes to show you, it's not always, when you get a messed up motor, something that's not working right and running right, it, sometimes it's the simple stuff that you don't even think to look at. And the way it was acting, there was no doubt in my mind that it was a timing issue. Because it doesn't backfire through the carburetor because it's not fueling properly. If it's fuel, it will backfire through the exhaust. If it's spark, you know, spark meaning timing, it will backfire through the carburetor because if it backfires through the carburetor, it's igniting the fuel at the wrong time and throwing a combustion of the fuel out the carburetor where it never should be. So that's how you know when it's backfiring out of the carburetor, you know it's spark related, timing related. I still need to put some more miles on it to see how it does. I want to make sure that everything's okay with the uh, carburetor and tune and whatnot like that. All right, let's get going. Let's go see what's good. See how she starts up now. I let her cool down just a little bit. That's maybe 10 minutes, so let's see. Well, there you have it guys, look at that. We have a perfectly running motor. She runs real nice. Very, very happy with it. Still a couple things that could be better and they are directly related to the carburetor. So now we know the spark issue is fixed. And remember, if it backfires out of the carburetor, that means it's a timing slash spark issue. There's something wrong with the spark and the timing of the motor. All right, guys, so I just went ahead and threw the HP on. Let's just see if that carburetor even works.
way, he can't be happy with this. And, you know, we got to jet it, so it's probably a little fat, but I'm okay with that. Everything seems to be going good. We're tracking pretty straight. I put a new guide wheel idler pulley on the tensioner. Everything seems really nice. Uh, the brakes are a huge improvement over before. I mean, huge, huge improvement. All right, so you guys could probably hear in the video the difference between the HP carb and the stock carb. I think you could tell the difference. Um, right from the gate though, we had instant idling, smoother through the rev range. Now, it's definitely not at its full potential. I think it is running a little bit fat. I think that is partly to do with the air filter. Uh, but I don't think I can fit the other one on here. I'll have to see. Nonetheless, she's running great. But it's running a little fat and there's no real adjustments outside of putting a different jet in here, which I would do if I need to. But because the cool air is coming for the winter rapidly, and because it's a brand new motor, I'm gonna let it sit right where it's at. It's not peak performance, but that's okay. Give it a month of him riding like this, and then we can go in and start tweaking it to get some of the fuel out of it, to get more speed from it. So I think it's a really great little fix. I hope he likes it. We'll see what his reaction is in a little bit. Nonetheless, I hope you guys like the whole build series on Bling Bears revamped bike with the new cdh 110 full port work uh, carburetor problems magnet problems from the factory everything rectified fixed and ready to go running great now looking great new handlebars nice big fat seat 42 sprocket new auto pull every little thing that just makes the difference for the bike to be what it is now which is basically a more comfortable mode of transportation so if you like what you see, don't forget to come over to our Facebook group. Come over to our Facebook group chat. Feel free to join them. They're free. And hit the like button for me if you like what you see here because that helps get the video out to more people so that by next year I can afford a Lamborghini. Hit the subscribe if you're not subscribed because like 70% of people that watch it aren't subscribed. So that's weird. But appreciate it. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace. What do you think? Now, new. You got a 42 sprocket instead of the 44, so you could cruise at a little lower RPM at a higher speed or a normal speed. Mm -hmm. You got an HP carb, it has an awesome automatic choke. So, see this little button over here, right? That's your choke. Okay. So, you push that down, see how it doesn't come back up? Yeah. It only comes up when you go full throttle. See, you heard it click off? So all you gotta do is twist the full throttle. What's that click? That's the choke coming off. Watch the oh, so so it's down. Watch, I'm gonna go full throttle, and it automatically. Oh, wow. So you don't gotta go while you're riding. And it's so you don't gotta to play with it. Right. Oh, you are. That's nice, right? Um, new handlebars. They're aluminum too, so they're nice. But see the high rise. Mm -hmm. So I didn't adjust the height of the seat. This is where you had it, but mm -hmm. you're gonna be so much more comfortable. It's got the 110 cc. It's gotta be broken in still. Okay. So, just take it easy. Oh, on this side. Brand new derailleur in the back. Mm -hmm. Change the gears. I also put a 7-speed. It used to be a 5-speed. Okay. Still no front derailleur, but now you have 7 gears in the back to play with. And a brand new derailleur, because your old derailleur was just getting chewed up in the teeth too much. Yeah. I changed your rear shifter. It's now a thumb shifter up here. So, for your derailleur, it's gold all through here. Nothing else on the neck anymore. Okay. Um, and I put new cables on and stuff like that. Oh, and on the front, you got cantilever brakes. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So you got way better brakes now. All right. Um, and I put new pads in the rear too. But all in all, that's it. All right. Yeah, I can't wait to see you try it and everything. Let me know what you think of it. All right. Oh, I love you, man. <laughs> no doubt, brother. I'm excited for you to use it. All right. How much more comfortable is that it's position, right? Oh. Oh, yeah. And that seat, I know you love it. Yeah, <laughs> Have a good night, man. Be safe. Yes, sir.